Approximately 70 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous, Asia was filled with a vast array of dinosaurs, many of which you could find lookalikes for in North America. And you could even find a partial lookalike for the Tyrannosaurus rex, as these ancient lands had their very own Tyrannosaurus species. At the time, it had no name, but today we know this theropod to be Tarbosaurus. This ferocious theropod was unearthed in the expanse of Gobi Deserts by a Soviet dig team, which stumbled upon a large skull and vertebrae. The skull was eerily similar to that of the T-Rex, and therefore the Soviets believed that they had discovered their very own Tyrannosaurus, which they dubbed Tyrannosaurus Batar, the latter portion meaning hero. At the same time, the discovery also led to the retrieval of three other theropods, which all differed in size, resulting in the creation of two new Gorgosaurus species and a separate brand new genus for the largest skeleton, which they named Tarbosaurus, meaning the alarming lizard. And speaking of alarming, there's been an increasingly common trend of cyber attacks around the world. That's why I'd like to introduce you all to today's video partner, NordVPN. Like I just mentioned, cyber attacks, phishing, malware, and ransom attacks are all becoming increasingly common in our modern day world. In fact, a 2024 report noted that the amount of cyber attacks was up 221% for the year 2023 compared to 2022. Meaning that unlike the risk of being attacked by an extinct animal, a cyber attack is a very real risk. Fortunately, NordVPN is the ankylosaurus of the digital world, being able to protect from pretty much any cyber threat with their threat protection. For example, let's say that you're trying to download some cool paleo art, and you just realized that you might have clicked on the sketchy add download button and not the actual download button. Well, NordVPN has your back and will block any malware from infecting your computer. It will also block things like sketchy websites in general, as well as the dreaded ad pop-up. And the great thing with NordVPN is that there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so it's absolutely risk-free to try it out. And so with that said, try NordVPN today by using our link in the description or the comment below and get four months free when you purchase a two-year subscription. And now, back to the Soviet discovery. So while the Soviet paleontologists were right in the fact that they had found a new genus, they had made some mistakes in their classification, as a decade later, a subsequent analysis would find that every theropod discovered during that excursion actually all belonged to just one genus and species. This genus was of course the new genus named before, Tarbosaurus, and thus the idea that they had found a new Tyrannosaurus or Gorgosaurus was discarded. Regardless though, the Tarbosaurus was still undeniably a Tyrannosaur, possessing many features seen in its relatives including an S-shaped neck, proportionally tiny hands, and fused parietal bones. And of all of its relatives, it most resembled its American counterpart, the Tyrannosaurus, with whom it shared similar body proportions and a nearly identical endocranial structure, with both also possessing lichen skulls and teeth. Although the two still had their differences, with the Tyrannosaurus having a much wider skull and body, as well as having larger hands, proportionally, with Tarbosaurus actually possessing the smallest hands of any known Tyrannosaur relative to its body size. These differences still didn't divide the two by much, and paleontologists currently believe that the Tyrannosaurus and Tarbosaurus were sister taxa, meaning that they were each other's closest relatives within the Tyrannosauridae family. This sister group is known as the Tyrannosaurini, and includes a third member, the Zhuchang Tyrannus, which was the smallest and oldest of the three residing, like the Tarbosaurus, within Asia. Because of their strong connection, it was once thought by some that the Tarbosaurus gave rise to the Tyrannosaurus rex, with the hypothesis that some individuals successfully crossed the Bering Strait while it was connected. However, this idea is now considered wrong, as older Tyrannosaurs are now known from North America, which may have evolved into the T-Rex, such as the Daspletosaurus. On top of this, we know thanks to a very recent study that there was an older Tyrannosaurus species as well, the Macrancis, that predated the Tarbosaurus, casting more doubt on the idea of it being the Tyrant King's forefather. But the study did still find them to be sister taxon, which in some ways has overshadowed the Tarbosaurus' reputation, as the T-Rex has rendered it not even being the biggest member within its own clade, despite being the second largest Tyrannosaur of the 13 known genera. Naturally, to be the second largest, adult Tarbosaurs were extremely large, with the average adult measuring 10 meters or 33 feet long, while standing 3 meters or 9.8 feet tall at the hips. 
and thanks to its robust skeletal structure and ample muscles, the Tarbosaurus was also extraordinarily heavy, tipping the scales at over 5 tons, tying it in 13th place for the heaviest theropod ever, along with Suchomimus and Therizinosaurus. To put this into scale, you would need roughly 5 average sized giraffes to equal the weight of one Tarbosaurus. And large specimens show that this nightmare didn't stop here, as one giant skull, which was 1.35 meters or 4.4 feet long, is thought to have belonged to an adult that reached 39 feet or 12 meters from snout to tail, making it just as long as the Tyrannosaurus macrensis, nearly identical to the T-Rex in length, though it was still lighter and shorter in height. Despite this, its slight size inferiority to the T-Rex had no impact on the Tarbosaurus, as in its homeland it was still the largest predator around by a long shot, helping to secure its place as the most dominant apex predator, a position that was only strengthened by its titanic jaw and bite. In true Tyrannosaur fashion, the Tarbosaurus possessed a giant, heavily built skull that was covered in an unusual amount of large muscles as it had a large fenestra or opening that served as an attachment point for muscles. This gave Tarbosaurus an immensely powerful bite that's been estimated at 10,000 pounds per square inch, rendering it more forceful than the bite of certain larger theropods like Giganotosaurus, plus any living animal today. This was seriously unfortunate news for any herbivore in its environment, made worse by the fact that the Tarbosaurus was by no means toothless with adults possessing between 58 and 64 giant teeth within their mouths that were all more serrated than the teeth of even the T-Rex. These lethal teeth, coupled with its power, led the Tarbosaurus to being a walking hydraulic press that easily crushed and tore through any victim's flesh and bones, removing huge amounts of meat with each bite, rapidly leading to catastrophic blood loss and shock. Naturally, such terrifying power and size all led to Tarbosaurus to being a butcher of giants with isotope analysis finding that it had a preference for hadrosaurs, ankylosaurs, and titanosaurs, some of which, like the Saurolophus and Nemectosaurus, were bigger than even itself. This analysis has been backed by direct evidence as well, with all mentioned prey having been found with severe bite marks that matched those of the Tarbosaurus. Fossil remains have also shown that other large dinosaurs in the area were not exempt from the menu either, including giant theropods. But I'm not talking about other Tarbosauruses, rather the cumbersome Dinochirus. This was a giant ornithomimosaur that was surprisingly larger than the Tarbosaurus, weighing anywhere from 6 to over 7 tons. Sadly for it, size was not a foolproof deterrence as one recovered specimen displayed, as numerous parts of the body had been punctured and gouged with such ferociousness that the animal had been essentially disemboweled. The attack was so chaotic that when the specimen was first discovered, it remained a mystery for quite some time on why its remains were so scattered and damaged. Another theropod that may have been a food item as well was the Therizinosaurus. This was a slightly smaller yet still giant theropod that weighed about 5 tons at its max, while also possessing the largest known claws of any animal, either extinct or extant. As of yet, no remains of it have shown predation by the Tarbosaurus though this may very well change, and it still goes without question that Tarbosaurus was a giant slayer, with some even thinking that one of its unique traits was an adaptation purely designed for going after the biggest land animals ever, the Titanosaurs. Specifically, its skull, along with being robust and roped with muscles, was also extremely rigid, with its mandible in particular being much sturdier and more inflexible than what is seen in other Tyrannosaurs. This rigidity is thought to have played a big role in taking down sauropods, as it helped the Tarbosaurus maintain a tight grip when biting down, and created a unique interlocking mechanism only seen in the Tarbosaurus, that further made escape impossible for sauropods. An escape was also off the table when it came to speed, with preliminary studies finding the Tarbosaurus capable of max speeds of 25 miles per hour or 40 kilometers an hour, which is about as fast as an African bush elephant. This may not seem like much, but it was plenty enough to catch sauropods and large hadrosaurs. They were both heavier and slower. The Tarbosaurus was undoubtedly a masterclass hunter, which could still be quite messy, but it also did have pinpoint precision, highlighted by its remarkable ability to scavenge when the chance arose, with various remains showing meticulous yet enormous bites around certain bones, 
indicating the Tarbosaurus could expertly strip the flesh from any carcass laying around, a nifty tool in any situation. And the talents of Tarbosaurus by no means ended here, as this Tyrannosaur had a wide range of attuned senses that aided it throughout its entire life, with one of these senses being its smell. The Tarbosaurus had one powerful nose, which we know about thanks to a brain endocast that revealed a huge olfactory bulb and nerves, traits typically only seen in animals with a keen sense of smell. This attribute let hunting Tarbosaurs easily track down prey and pick up the scent of already deceased dinosaurs. It's also been hypothesized that its pinpoint smelling lent itself in complex mating behaviors, because within its olfactory system there was a large Jacobson organ, an important organ in tetrapods that detect pheromones. Due to its sheer size, the Tarbosaurus could probably pick up on all kinds of pheromones with ease, thus helping an individual find a potential mate. And we know that this overall potent smelling ability was a big part of a Tarbosaurus's life, playing a larger role in hunting and socializing than even Vision did, as the areas of its brain associated with eyesight were underdeveloped, suggesting it wasn't the best. Additionally, unlike North American Tyrannosaurs, the Asian ones had narrower skulls where the eyes were primarily facing sideways as opposed to straight forward, meaning that Tarbosaurus did not have binocular vision, but it did redeem itself with its one-of-a-kind hearing capabilities. Similar to its olfactory system, its auditory nerve was proportionally huge, suggesting a good ability to hone in on the sounds of prey. The presence of good hearing likely further means that its balance and coordination was above average, a key trait when tackling huge dinosaurs that ultimately had more power in their movements, meaning that battles with them involved a lot of tugging and thrashing. For these scuffles, the Tarbosaurus had another little trick too, its skin. Strangely enough, paleontologists are aware of what the Tarbosaurus skin was like thanks to skin impressions, which showed that certain areas of the body were covered in scales, which added a degree of protection. So far, a footprint and thoracic fragment has confirmed that the feet and chest were scaly. It's not yet assured that the rest of the body bore such scales, though we do know from other Tyrannosauridae that scales were found in multiple areas throughout the entire body. In the Tarbosaurus's case, these scales varied in size, with the bigger scales measuring 2 cm or 0.7 inches in width, which is about the same as the dimensions of a dime. These scales did not overlap in life and would have helped to prevent superficial damage like scrapes and cuts which could potentially turn into infections. This is perhaps best showcased by the lack of Tarbosaurus remains that bore infection related damage, with the only known damaged Tarbosaurus bone coming from an isolated hand that was fractured during a struggle with prey, proving once more that this was by no means a lazy scavenger, and rather a highly active predator that efficiently turned its ecosystem into its very own dominion. And this domain spread far and wide, with remains being found within the Gobi Desert and present-day eastern China. Of all its known habitats, the Namek Formation is by far the best studied one, and is where Tarbosaurus was most concentrated. This formation is today a dry desert, but during the Tarbosaurus's heyday it was in many ways an oasis, where the climate was warm and humid, and the lands were split and broken up by large rivers, shallow lakes, and mudflats all of which supplied life to expansive marshes and conifer-dominated forests. This in turn, of course, allowed for the presence of a lot of dinosaurs, which along with the previously mentioned ones included Tarkia, Barsboldia, Homalocephaly, Prenocephaly, Opisthocelacodia, Mononychus, Atasaurus, Gallimimus, and Ceramimus, Avimimus, Conchoraptor, Gobiraptor, Oxaco, Nemectomaya, Xanabazar, and Borogovia. Interestingly enough, there were also plenty of other Tyrannosauridae around too, such as the Bagaratan, Raptorex, and Alioramus. Fortunately, for the Tarbosaurus, none of these theropods were a major threat, with all of them being considerably smaller, with Alioramus being the closest challenger at roughly one ton. Still, these guys may have been a threat to younger Tarbosauruses, who targeted smaller prey in their adolescence, thus creating some competition. What the adults did have to worry about though was the environment itself. While its homeland was lush for most of the year, sediment deposits revealed that this oasis had a sinister secret. Droughts. Occasionally, like what is seen in the famous Morrison Formation, 
Droughts would take place in these ancient lands, drying out water sources, and creating large dunes. During such times, loss of life was inevitable, and every Tarbosaurus's senses were put to the ultimate test. Fights and competitions also likely skyrocketed during these droughts, with only the toughest making it out. Yet, at some point, not even the biggest and baddest Tarbosaurus prevailed, as fossils are only known from the Maastrichtian age 70 million years ago. No one knows what exactly happened to this iconic theropod, though as mentioned, some think it went on to evolve into a new Tyrannosaur, while others prefer the idea that climate change claimed it. And that about wraps up this episode, but if you found this video interesting, you should check out the video we made recently on the Velociraptor, which could have potentially been a contemporary to the Tarbosaurus, and also of course inhabited the Gobi Desert in the Lake Cretaceous. Like always, thanks for watching, and until next time on Extinct Zoo.